Hello, and welcome to the Topics in Radiography podcast. This is something I have been wanting to do for a very long time. This is episode one. Uh, so let's just jump in. You know, as I said, I've been wanting to do this for quite a long time, several years now, but I haven't really taken the plunge because, unfortunately, due to my very busy schedule working uh, multiple jobs, I have not been able to put a lot of content on my blog lately because I just don't have the time to commit to research, come up with all the really good looking images or videos and edit and do all the post-processing detail that it takes to produce good quality written or video blog posts. But one thing I do have time to do is talk. I can talk in the car, I can talk on the way to and from work or between hospitals as my primary job requires me to travel throughout a lot of San Diego. So what I do have is time in the car that is not necessarily utilized by doing anything else but thinking about my day. So now that I have some time available, I can put my efforts into an audio show that will hopefully help you out in the long run. I do plan on producing more content. I still receive questions from the community regarding radiography from uh, students, from people interested in the field, and from technologists alike who just need you know, a little more information by means of tutorials or anything that would help them advance their current knowledge of the topic. Since this is my first episode, the show's format will be a little bit different from uh, what I normally plan to do. I plan on posting every two to three weeks on a topic related to general radiography. I already have loads of topics that I can speak about, driven by questions I generally receive from students and prospective students. Uh, before I get into the meat of those topics, though, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Jeremy Enfinger, if you don't already know me. I am a radiologic technologist. I do have a bachelor's degree in radiologic science. I always kind of considered radiography to be my plan B. You know, when I was growing up, I was very interested in aviation. I thought, I will join the Navy and try to become a Navy pilot right out of high school. So, funny story, I actually met with a recruiter right before I graduated and at that time, I was in very good physical condition. I ran track and field and cross country, had no problem going out and running eight miles if I had to on the spot. And I filled out all the paperwork and the application. They couldn't process it because I wasn't going to turn 18 until two weeks later. But after I filled out the application, I went in to kind of get some details as far as you know, when I was going to uh, leave for basic training and uh, you know, come in and, and know what to tell my parents who didn't know I had been looking into this stuff at the time. And to my surprise, they said, you know, we can't take you. You have a history of asthma. And though I hadn't had any sort of medical problems with asthma since age 12 or far before I started running, just due to the history of that medical condition, they wouldn't take me. I then tried the Air Force. Uh, my dad was in the Army, and he spoke to me and said, you know, he could probably pull some strings. And I really didn't want to go into the Army because they didn't have an aviation program, and that was my ultimate long-term goal. So I did have to take a step back and kind of really consider what I wanted to do with my life. As a boy growing up, I had plenty of uh, broken bones plenty of injuries, and I had a lot of experience, especially having asthma, of being in the hospital. I became really interested in the x-ray field when a father of a friend of mine in high school attended x-ray school while we were in high school. And he used to talk about his experiences both in school and in clinic, and he thought it was really cool. Over the years, we would bring him lunch to his work on the weekends when we were out of school. And then once we graduated high school and I was kind of goofing off in the local community college general education courses, I had a lot of free time during the day. It was then that I started really looking into this as a career option. I started asking him questions about what it took, what, what were the requirements. And he was really a good source of information for me. He kind of told me straight he ended up vouching for me so that I could get a job as a patient transporter. They used to call us runners, but now they call them patient logistics uh, at the, the hospital system where I work now. But you would transport patients 
to and from the radiology department. You would also, um, in those times, we had dark rooms with chemical film processors. So part of my duties was a dark room tech is what they used to say. But we would take the exposed films from the x-ray techs and we would just kind of hang out in the dark room and run them through the chemical processor and reload the cassettes with new clean film that was unexposed. And you kind of had to be quick doing this because they were waiting on the other side of the pass box for a new cassette to use because they had other images to expose. Anyway, long story short, I ended up going to x-ray school as a plan B, and it has just grown into a great career choice for me. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. There's a lot of opportunity there. I've, I've taken a lot of opportunity myself. There, there have been cross-training opportunities. I did some CT for a while. I also trained in cardiac cath lab. And in that department, they also had me doing interventional radiology. I also have had an opportunity to teach and have found that teaching is a real love of mine. I, I do enjoy helping other people. I like seeing people learn and understand these complex ideas and processes that we go into in the, in a radiography program. I like seeing people get it. You know, there's just that moment where they, they understand something that maybe has been a little difficult to grasp. And if I can help them understand or gain a better knowledge of a topic, it's very rewarding for me. So in a selfish way, you know, this, this whole podcast, my whole blog, everything is, has been selfish to the extent that I really enjoy watching people get excited about this field. I, I believe it's a great career path for anyone who has a desire to help other people, who is technologically inclined and doesn't mind getting their hands dirty a little bit. The other part of this is, you know, I had a very difficult clinical experience. When you're in x-ray school, you have to go through your hands-on portion. And when I was in school, it was 40 hours a week, uh, Monday through Friday. I eventually had to do weekend rotations and evening shift rotations as a student when you're not getting paid, but you're there to learn and observe from the staff that work there. You are required to get competency evaluations on the exams that you perform. All this is a requirement for taking your national exam and uh, the state of California exam where, where I grew up and went to school. And I just had a lot of obstacles. Um, you know, that's, that's probably plenty of material for a discussion later on, but I just had a tough time. I, I ended up almost quitting several times due to some of the frustrations I had. And if I had just had somebody to kind of come along and give me a little support or some boost in morale or just a little bit of encouragement, it would have gone a long way. And I think things are better now for a lot of the students out there, but you know, there, there's still some of those experiences that are being had with just a little tough situation in clinic. It, it's, it is difficult. I had to eat a lot of crow, I think, uh, as a student in order to make it through. Uh, but I'm glad I did. I'm very excited, if you can't tell already, about my career path. And I do like to encourage people who might be interested in pursuing this as a path of their own, as well as providing lots of useful information so that they can determine, is this the right career choice for me and how to succeed? I really desire to be transparent about everything I've learned. Um, I've learned a lot of things the easy way, but I've also learned a few things the hard way. I don't mind telling you about my mistakes or any of those lessons that I've learned. Uh, like I said, I want to be transparent. I want you to understand that you can be successful in your aspirations and medical imaging, whether you're researching radiography as a career, if you're currently a student, or already a technologist looking to advance in your career. If you're hearing about me for the first time, you need to know that this all started from my blog. Back in 2004, I received my first teaching job, and I just found that the time allotted to go into the discussions that I wanted to, the really small details about the lessons I was teaching, I just didn't have a lot of time to go into that detail. So I started brainstorming and thinking of different ways I could. A lot of that was direct student interaction and uh, with people who could stay after class, we'd have those discussions, but uh, I wanted to make it available to everyone in their free time. So 
It took me a couple years, but finally getting around to it in 2007, when I was teaching full time, I created a blog. I started it on Blogger. And uh, it has just grown immensely since then. You can visit my current blog. It's it's now a privately hosted site at topicsinradiography.com. I really thrive on interaction within the community. So much so that after a few years of blogging, I started noticing a pattern. I would get contacted nonstop by prospective students, uh, people that were really researching the field, And they would come to me time and time again, trying to get in touch with me about the blog, about the field itself. They wanted to know the kinds of things that you do every day as a radiologic technologist. And those topics were just as hot as the tutorials I was putting out for my students. I had people emailing me nonstop about, you know, what does it take to become a radiographer? What's school like? How do you get through clinical experience? It became very time consuming for me to reply to these people individually with a big long message and and write a new paragraph for every little question they had, which I didn't mind doing, but it just became very time consuming. So I started to research. Uh, I figured I'd get a list of resources available. I would post it and that way I could direct someone to a link that would have all the answers. Well, that worked for a little while, but I continued getting questions I wrote one or two blog posts that I could just point them to, but more and more questions continued to arise. These are very good questions. They they couldn't really be answered in just a simple blog post. And that's when I kind of saw the opportunity to write a book on the subject. So I wrote one. It's called Becoming a Radiologic Technologist. It sold several hundred copies as of right now. It's, you know, it's not a huge seller. It's, this is a very small topic, a very focused Uh, sort of group that the book would apply to. I don't expect to make thousands of dollars on this book, but it is a source of information I can direct people to. Hopefully uh, with the low cost of the book that I tried to keep on it, it, it's it's a low cost uh, for answering some basic questions about school and whether or not you're even really interested in getting into x-ray school, as well as kind of giving you some tips on how to get through x-ray school once you're in. It's available in hard copy and Kindle versions of the book. You can see my show notes at the bottom of the the post here. I'll be providing links to everything I'm talking about within the notes. When I put this book out, I received a lot of criticism from technologists in, in the community, largely due to the job market at the time. You know, this was not the highest field of demand at the time. And I generally had two responses to that. Uh, number one, The average age of healthcare workers in the United States is still rising. We need to prepare for a large percentage of the workforce getting ready to retire within the next few years. So if you figure it's going to take you a year, maybe two, to get through your prerequisite courses and another two years to get through your actual program, by the time somebody gets out, how many people have left this workforce? The largest percentage of employees belong to the generation uh, called the baby boomers that are gearing up for retirement and some have already started retiring. So you're going to see a shift in the needs coming up very soon. And I've seen it start already in several regions across the country. So while there is truth that, you know, it might not be the ideal time in some people's local community for this type of job field, I don't want it to deter anyone who really has the right goals and, and motivation and in getting into this field. It's a great field. It's at times it can be competitive, but that should not deter you if that's ultimately your goal. I also wanted to create a book that was realistic. I found a lot of the resources I was trying to point people to before writing this book were created by people that just weren't in the field. There was a lot of misinformation out there, inaccuracies in the information you could find. And a lot of these inaccurate sources were number one in the Google page ranks. It made me really kind of mad that there was so much misinformation out there. A lot of the bad information that I saw included things like a description of your job. And some of them said, read medical images for a diagnosis. And 
if you spend any time researching this field, you'll know you have a you'll have to have a medical license to do that. They call those radiologists. A radiologic technologist produces the images. So I just became frustrated. You know, all these all these resources pointed to advertisements. So obviously people were getting high traffic and making money doing this stuff with just horrible information out there. I've always been a proponent of giving you information straight so that you can be informed about the decisions you're about to make. I would be very upset if I spent two years in school and I didn't come out with it with what I had intended on acquiring with all my research and planning and time spent. A lot of people think radiographers push a button all day and that's all we do. It's a huge pet peeve of mine, but that has also formed some motivation for me to create these things. I want to get knowledge out there spread out in the community of what we really do. The amount of school it requires to perform good radiography and protect patients from radiation dose. You can do a lot of things wrong in this field that can potentially be harmful to patients. And we do put a lot of education into doing them right and practicing it right after you graduate from school. I don't intend to get into too much detail going forward about what it requires for the field, or or I can always do more podcasts on those things. My goal for starting this podcast is to provide information to people in general about this field, what it takes to become a radiographer, and how to improve your skills as a radiographer after school. As I said, I don't believe in watering anything down, so you're going to be hearing some honest opinions on some of these things. I don't know anyone else who's currently doing this. You typically have to sign up for a orientation session for a radiography program to really get any information straight and have an opportunity to ask people questions about this field. Um, so I, I want to provide that opportunity prior to you investing all that time and energy to, to doing that. Hopefully I can answer some of those questions for you here. It's a funny story. I actually met my wife because she heard about me finishing x-ray school from my mother, who she worked with at the time. And she wanted someone she could discuss radiography and potentially ultrasound with as a career path for her. So we arranged a meeting. We got together and and had some serious discussions about what to expect every day. What are some pros and cons of the field? And I addressed some misconceptions she had. And I really think I ended up talking her out of it <laughs> uh, in the end which is, you know, could be a good or bad thing, but she would have probably preferred somebody to take the time to explain a few of these things first before she just dove into it head on without any research or or discussion. That being said, if you have any questions you'd like me to answer about the field of radiography or any of the advanced imaging modalities, I'm not certified in anything advanced beyond general x-ray, but I have experience in some of those things And I have a lot of contacts where I can get information or potentially even have guest speakers on here. Please feel free to ask me. You can comment on my blog. You can email me at topicsinradiography at gmail.com. I promise I will give you a straight answer so you can consider yourself informed and at least make your own decisions off of solid information. Going forward, I believe a normal episode of this podcast should take 20 to 30 minutes and should cover one, maybe two topics in particular. Depending on what kind of feedback I receive from the community, I would love to address any questions I'm sent towards the end of the episode. Eventually, I'd like to get some guest speakers, like I said, to provide you as much useful information as possible. And it's my hope that you will feel like you're walking away with information that you can put to use right away. I'm more than happy to share any resources I have, and I'll provide plenty of links to the information I'm discussing during the podcast episodes in my show notes. You can see my show notes on my blog. Again, that's topicsandradiography.com. So other reasons I'm posting this podcast is, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit of selfishness to it. I understand that recording your own voice can point out some errors in speaking skills and being an instructor and someone who regularly gets up to speak in front of other people, I need some improvement on that. I still teach as an adjunct instructor for the radiography program here in San Diego. And I'll let you in on a little secret. I hate public speaking. I need a lot of work on these skills and I'm taking some of my own advice from my book, which is to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. 
In other words, I'm trying to challenge myself with something new, something that will point out areas of improvement I need. And much like going into a clinical environment at x-ray school, you, you really just learn by jumping in and doing it and practicing and making solid effort to better yourself. The other reason I'm starting this podcast is to help you. If you notice, I don't have any advertisements on my blog. The only thing I'm really selling there is my book, which I have attempted to make affordable for even student income. I'm not against advertisements, but I have a pet peeve when I see blogs that are bogged down so much with them that I have trouble finding the author's content. This podcast is being posted for free. I'm hoping I can meet some of your needs by serving as a go-to guy for information about anything and everything radiography-related. If you want to know more about me, please visit topicsinradiography.com and connect with me via social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. If you're a student and need some resources for anything in, in school, I've got a Pinterest account with lots of images. Uh, my blog has a ton of helpful tips and tutorials. Feel free to email me anytime. I can't stress that enough. I will always answer my emails. You might have to give me a day or two because I just took on a, an extra class that starts next week at the college. So that's two classes I'm doing and potentially a third. But as I said earlier, I really thrive on interaction with the community. I want to connect with everybody out there who's interested in this field and passionate about radiography. And I'm doing what I can to promote this field and I'm getting motivated people going in this field. There's a lot that can be done here. A lot of opportunity, a lot of career paths. So anything I can do to help, I'm, I'm glad to do. I want to thank you for sticking around for the first session of the Topics of Radiography podcast. I look forward to hearing additional feedback from you as I get more specific with my topics. Again, this is Jeremy Infinger with the Topics in Radiography podcast. Thank you and take care.